Van Buren's version of Joshua Graham was an S rank, god tier edgelord. The cream of the crop of the Fallout anime. So why is he so cucked in New Vegas? Why do we see punished Joshua Graham in New Vegas? Well, the simple answer is that he's seen some shit. But in Van Buren, Joshua Graham really comes to life. At least in the design documents of Van Buren. We realize that Van Buren is the cancelled version of Fallout 3 that Interplay, Black Isle were working on. But, Joshua Graham talks about his past in New Vegas. Very, very cryptically. Which he would have done in Van Buren as well. But what is the story with Van Buren's Joshua Graham? Well, the hanged man, Joshua Graham, would be discovered by the player character hung by his neck and covered in bandages. And Joshua Graham was described to be a former Mormon missionary, which we know from New Vegas, and he also founded the Legion, at least in Van Buren's lore, with uh, Caesar or Kaiser, depending on what side of the mentally challenged spectrum you fall on. Joshua met two followers of the apocalypse at the Grand Canyon. One of them was Caesar. And then from there, they di they discovered their little, you know, relationship that they had that would ultimately lead to Joshua Graham becoming the edgelord that he would in Van Buren. The Legion rose to power during the reign of a tribe called the Twisted Hares. The Twisted Hares were one of the fiercest tribes in Arizona. They were undisputedly the king of the tribals in the area. Once they got involved with Joshua Graham and Caesar and the Legion, they got allied with them. The Legion were going to act as uh, scouts to kind of scout the region. I mean, that's typical. And they formed this alliance with the Twisted Hairs, the Legion did. Caesar would then turn on the, the tribe, the Twisted Hairs tribe, completely erasing their identity, leaving what is known to be only one survivor, one woman, the tribal goddess Hecate. And then she established an all-female group called the Daughters of Hecate. And then as it stands in current Fallout lore, as far as we know in the Fallout universe, Ulysses is the only surviving member at this point of any of that shit, of the Twisted Hairs, and he still rocks the Dreadlocks, which was why they were called the Twisted Hairs. But as far as we know, Ulysses is the only one that's left. Now that could also, that could be revealed to be false in uh, newer games. I, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't see Bethesda taking it to the West Coast. And I doubt they're gonna license the IP out to Obsidian ever again. <laughs> so, you know, unless Chris Avalon or Josh Sawyer get their hands on it again, I don't know if we're going back to the West Coast. But, as far as we know, Ulysses is uh, the last guy, the last person to be descended from the Twisted Hairs. Joshua Graham would have been a companion to the player character. Now, he was set to be the first companion that you would meet in Van Buren. As I said, you would come across him hung by his neck with, you know, just covered head to toe in bandages. Like we see him in New Vegas. We see him with his bandages on in New Vegas, though he's also rocking a Salt Lake City Police Department, like a uh, bulletproof vest SWAT attire. But we would find him hung by his neck for his crimes, uh, still alive, covered in bandages. If the player ca uh, character would uh, cut him down, obviously that would initiate the uh, companion aspects of this NPC. But it would also aggro like every tribal in the region. They would be incredibly upset and they would blame the player character in Van Buren for Joshua Graham's future crimes. That's how bad this dude was. They were just immediately like, what, are you serious? Like, it was like letting Charlie Manson out of jail. So they, once we found Joshua Graham and cut him down, he would follow us around and he would slowly diverge or divulge rather things uh, that like he wasn't okay with the Legion he, you would hear from him that like oh you know I'm pretty upset with the Legion but he wouldn't really tell you why like I and from what I understand from the design documents of Van Buren is that I mean you could see the bandages and stuff but he wouldn't necessarily tell you that he was burned head to toe or even if he did, he wouldn't tell you how it happened. He just said that he wasn't really cool with the Legion. 
and he wouldn't really say anything else about himself. Like I said, you would be blamed as the player character for his future crimes. So they that's why they were immediately mad at you. So they just it didn't matter if he would immediately do anything as soon as you cut him down. People just assumed since he was such a dickhead that <laughs> you cutting him down was just going to fuck up everything. So they they're already mad at you. Now this would be furthered with he would butcher like every tribal he come across, especially from the twin mother's tribe. If he met somebody from the twin mother's tribe, he would immediately attack them and butcher them. We're not talking about just kill them in a combat situation. He would butcher them. And it would it was said to be very graphic the way he did it. And he just really didn't like them. So you would start to get more of the sadistic nature from, from Graham. Like, I mean, he was hung. People are upset that you cut him down. So already this guy's like, you know, he's a pariah, which leads to the fact that they wanted him to be a jinxed companion like the pariah dog. The pariah dog is a dog you can find in Fallout 2 as a companion that's missing a bunch of shit. <laughs> like his eyes all fucked up and his leg is gone and stuff like that. You find him next to a pile of bullshit. But he gives you incredibly bad luck if you have him in your party. Joshua Graham would act the same way in Van Buren, not necessarily giving you bad luck, but unless you had like stellar speech, we're talking like, you know, maxed out speech skill, he, you would be fighting everybody. Joshua Graham would intentionally antagonize other NPCs into attacking the party. So you would go into a town or something and he would be like, hey, dickhead, fuck you. <laughs> and people would be like, hey, what's your problem? And he'd be like, oh, your face, you ugly bitch. And then he'd get you into a fight. I'm paraphrasing here. Obviously, I don't know if that's how it went down. But that's the idea that I got. Now, he would not enter New Canaan, which we know about New Canaan from Honest Hearts, the DLC in Fallout New Vegas. And he said he had other stuff to do, and he would just be like, oh man, I'll meet you at Burham, uh, Burham Springs. Burham Springs. Burham Springs? Just making sure that we get every pronunciation here. But he says that he would meet you there. Once you go into New Canaan, you meet a bishop named Mordecai. Mordecai apparently would tell you all about Joshua Graham. He'd, he would tattle on this motherfucker until his face was blue, telling you all about the Legion. Oh yeah, you know, he got covered in pitch, fucking set on fire, kicked into the Grand Canyon, he killed all these tribes members from the Twisted Hairs, he fucking betrayed him. Uh, he was part of the Legion, all the Legion's crimes. And in Van Buren, the Legion was much more intense too, because I'll say that uh, they really toned it down and pussified it, maybe at the request of Bethesda when it came to New Vegas. But when you see the crucifixions in New Vegas, they're supposed to be nude and and uh, nailed to the cross, not tied up there neatly to just like kind of cook in the sun. They were supposed to be crucified like Christ. Like we're talking crown of thorns, we're talking nails through the hands and, ar uh, and the feet, and we're talking fully nude, left in the sun to bleed out and suffer. And you would see this in Van Buren, they would also hang people while they did it as well. They would hang them until, you know, like a, until they were barely alive and then revive them with the pain of a crucifixion and then let them die that way. It's very brutal, very brutal. The Legion is not nice, and that's why I say it's more easy to side with the Legion. I don't really side with the Legion ever when I play New Vegas, but I hear a lot of people talk about siding with the Legion, and I feel like it's easier in New Vegas because they toned it down so fucking much. If you, if you saw the Van Buren version of the Legion, like, you'd have to be a real sick fuck to want to do that, or just have a, you know, want to have a good time in a video game and be the bad guy. Like uh, I've stated before, and I need to be more clear with my words, I don't think what you do in video games represents you as a person. But, I will say, it takes a pretty sick fuck to get off on that kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, once you get to Burham Springs, uh, Joshua would be engrossed in an argument with an NPC called Phil, according to the design documents, and boy howdy would we see the fury of Joshua Graham through this cutscene. After refusing to enter a new Canaan, the game knows that you now know about Joshua Graham's past through Mordecai the bishop. So when you get to Burham Springs, Joshua Graham uh, really, really lets it fly. And that's when you really get to see how brutal he is with this Phil character. He's engrossed in an argument with him about something and really pokes the bear until Phil attacks. And then apparently just, whew, too graphic for YouTube folks. Van Buren's Joshua Graham has the power of God and anime on his side. You can't fuck with that. Verge, let's slow it down like we're on a serve. Bottle shaped body like Mrs. Butterworth. 
but before you say another word, I'm back on the block like I'm laying on the street. I'm trying to stop lying like I'm on rob, but I'm not lying when I'm laying on the beat. On God, a touche, Lupe, cool as the unthaw, but I still feel possessed as a gun charge to come as correct as a pawn star. And the fresh pair steps in my best form.